Hello everybody and welcome to Skip Allen Paints and the YouTube channel of Skip Allen. Okay, so I've been trying to do this video for a couple of days now and I can't seem to get it done. I can't seem to get anything done right now. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to paint um, utilizing the clean workspace that I like to work with when I'm not doing a demonstration. Um, and it's not easy to do that because you can't see what I'm doing. And so I constantly want to explain everything as we go, but we'll give it a shot and see if we can get it done. I'm going to paint a watercolor, uh, something that I call inky landscapes. And uh, we're just going to throw some paint down and see where it leads us. So let's get started. Now, what you're looking at right now is an arranged palette that I've recently made. I've, I've gotten interested in the range palettes again and trying to clear uh, get one that I think is perfect for me. And I call this one Clean Simple Right, and that means it's, it's kind of a clean space. And everything that I want to work with is over here on the right. And so that works for me uh, being right-handed. And I don't have to travel over here to uh, get something um, for the most part. But when I actually paint, what I'm going to use is uh, a, I'm going to hide the painter user face, uh, user interface rather. So if you go to your win Windows menu and uh, you look under the Windows menu, you will see a command called show hide UI. And that's what I've put inside of my radial menu and I can hide the uh, user interface. Okay, so that's the clean space I like to work in. Now I'm going to need an image, so I go under the File menu to New Document, and it opens up uh, the New Document window, and I have uh, a document already set up that I want to work with. And um, it creates this um, document for me in a uh, single document uh, mode so that it's there are no windows uh, involved with it. Okay, now when I paint with with any midi media really, but especially with watercolor, I like to change this white area to make it look like uh, like I'm actually painting on paper. And so to do that, the first thing I want to do is I want to check my paper panel and make sure that I've got the paper I want set up. And, and that is the paper I want uh, to paint on. The next thing I need is I need, I have a script that I've created to actually do the work of making the layer and putting the uh, paper on it. Uh, a script is same thing as an action in Photoshop. It's just uh, recording a series of commands. So I need to find that um, palette that has that command on it. And so I'm going to come to the Windows menu again and come down to Show Hide Panels. And what that does is it opens up the panels that were already open on that arranged palette that you saw in the very beginning. And right down here is my script for paper overlay that creates the paper. Now, I'm going to open up the Layers panel. I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm going to do it so that you can see what this script does. So if I click on Paper Overlay, then it puts the paper up here at the top. It actually creates a um, layer that is a gel layer, so it's transparent, and it reduces the opacity to 80%. That's just a ballpark park figure. Um, actually, I think I'm going to reduce it a little bit more to about 65 or so, maybe 62. It looks a little brighter, um, and it looked a little gray to me before. And after I do that, I go in and lock the layer, and I come back to uh, the canvas layer. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of the layers panel again. I'm going to select a paper, and I have some on this uh uh, custom palette here, and I'm actually going to select that paper. Now, um, I like to see what the paper looks like that I'm working with, and when you look at this um, image here, this is the top one quarter 
of the paper. So you really don't know what it looks like on the canvas. Now, uh, so I have made another script that I call Show Paper. And when I click on that script, it will take whatever paper is uh, in view at whatever settings are there, and it will actually place it on the canvas in a, as a black and white image, just like that. Okay, so that tells me I'm now looking at what this paper would look like on this particular paper. So I can tell where the uh, texture is and how hopefully how the watercolor would uh, work on it. Now this is fairly dark and I don't think I want uh, a very dark um, strong texture like this. So what I would do is I would come over here to the contrast and bring that way down and then I would increase the brightness a lot so that it, it now the paper is uh, fairly light. I mean, there, it's it's not very strong at all. Now, I have a key set up on my uh, Wacom Cintiq that I call Delete Contents, and what it will do is it will delete the contents of any layer that I'm currently on. And so I just click that button, and that deleted the contents of the canvas layer. And I do show paper again, and now I can see what effect by changing the uh, settings of the paper. So I'm going to get rid of that. And uh, at this point, I'm going to select a brush and I'm going to select the very wet 01. I'm going to double check my temporal color palette and it's on black, which is where I want to be. And I'm going to now go, this is the main color. And so I'm going to switch to the additional color and see, I wanted it to be on a, a gray color. So then I'm going to go back and switch back so that the black is now the main color again. All right, so that was just testing for myself and also telling you what I'm doing. And we've got this uh, very wet a uh, one brush. Now, I have no idea what I want to have happen. Oops, I forgot one thing. Let me get rid of that. Um, I also want to set the brush to pause diffusion. So I need to open up the, um, what's called the, uh, what is it? Automatic brush controls, or a, we call it the ABC, advanced brush controls. And for some reason, it doesn't want to open up. There we go. All right. So I want to set, click on Pause Diffusion, and I can close it again. And that means I can paint and pick the brush up, and it won't start diffusing. And so I can, you know, make some decisions about what I'm doing. Like I said, I just like to put some paint down and see where it leads us. And I think I'm going to change the size of the brush. I have I also have a control or command that is on the Satik that, um, let's take that off, that uh, allows me to change the size of the brush. Okay, so I've just made a mess, and that's all in the world I want to do. And I come back over here to the advanced brush controls, and I take off the pause to fusion, and we see what happens. And, you know, at this point, we don't know. I know that I'm going to get some run. Uh, the paper texture is affecting what you see, but not very strongly. And I just want to see what may pop up that looks uh, good. Okay, and so the other thing that I want to do as well, while this is uh, running, I think I can do it while it's running. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get rid of the panels again so I've got this clean workspace that I'm working with. And at that, I'm going to stop the video because we've been talking a long time and uh, we'll come back and work some more on this painting in the next video. 
Alrighty, talk to you later. Bye-bye.